around because this is this is big league stuff. This is major league level. We've got Dan O'Neill. Dan O'Neill closed, I don't know, a couple hundred million. What was the number uh, in 22 for you and your and your team members? 172 million. Uncle 172 Byron. million. We have with us Tom Tool. You see the belt behind Tom. Tom is a 20 year plus vet in real estate. Tom won the belt from doing an objection handling expired call competition. He is a champion when it comes to these calls. He may or may not be the champion today as we jump in. Tom closed 500 sales with him and his fabulous team members in the greater Philadelphia area in 2022 Not for hundreds deal. of millions of dollars. 212 I'm, million to be there exact. It is. 212. More than Dan O'Neill. More than Dan. <laughs> um, I'm Byron Lazine. I started my career on cold calls, okay? On expireds, on this script that I have in front of me. We're going to talk about the scripts that we're all using. We're going to talk about um, exactly what we're calling, what lists we're calling from. And within five minutes, we're going to start the calls, okay? So we're going to frame this up here. And then in five minutes, we are starting the calls. Hit the subscribe if you absolutely freaking love what we're about to do. Uh, just for context, the team that I have in Connecticut did 681 transactions for 248 million last year. So Not we're all deal. coming with, with experience. We've been making these calls for many years. And our goal here is to elevate what's happening on the phones for the industry. So if you want to really get more listings, if you want to jack it up, this is the place to be. Share this link with somebody who can benefit from it right now. And please, if you could hit that subscribe as we jump in. All right. So Dan, what list are you going to be using as we start calls here in just a couple of minutes? Mm -hmm. What list will you be using and what script, if any script, are yep. you going to be using as we start dialing? So I'm going to be using a little bit of a Mojo dialer. I have a Volcom Red X and I'm going to use good old uh, Zillow. You know, Zillow for sale by owners. Uh, I have my local MLS where I pulled up a bunch of expires that I'm going to call. And I don't have a, a specific script that I use. I know that uh, Tom was mentioning he uses the Mike Ferry script. I know you have one as well. For me, uh, I like to do it a la carte. I have my own kind of script that I've developed over the years. It's actually how I found my first house that I bought. It was by using this script. And it's something that everyone's going to have their own, right? And you got to find what works best for you. So I found that this script, whether it be Florida or New York, works best for me. And, and that's what I'm going to do. And people are, uh, it's going to be different. I'll put it that way. All right. So Dan has a script that he's been working for years that he's come up with. And he's got a variety of lists. Tom, what lists will you be working as we begin to dial? And what is your script? Great question. So I am using Vulcan 7. I'll be supplementing that with the Mojo Dialer. So we got a little <laughs> dialer action with a separate list. And on top of that, um, I'm using the Mike Ferry, I think, patented in 1929 script because that's when Mike Ferry started coaching real estate agents. And that's when you got your license too, right? Tom? It is. Yeah. I've been, I've been almost 100 years in the business. It's fantastic. Um, in all seriousness, probably one of the best scripts ever written. And it still works today. So I'll be using that. It's ingrained in my head, and that's the only way I do it. All right. I'm, I'm going to be using the Tom Ferry Sales Edge script. You can see this is from an OG Sales Edge, Tom Tool. You, you and I were probably Love at them. this one together. I have it all marked up. Now, I use this script as an a la carte menu to the phone call. Uh, I, number six may be the first question I ask. Number two it may be the, the third question I ask. I will jump around on this <laughs> script based on the context, based on the person that I'm speaking on the other line with. I'm going to be using Mojo Dialer, okay? I have the Mojo set up and ready to go. Now, as we start dialing here, we're, going, we're not going to be able to play the person on the other end, okay? So 
you know, maybe we, we can hear some, but just like when we did on the walkthrough with the four cell by owner call that Tom tool locked in on his third call, locked in a listing appointment for him and his team, we will break down these calls that have, um, uh, there's a mute going on here, Bobby. What's going on? No. Uh, the host I, has I can, muted your call. Your, your calls. Uh, I can hear you guys fine. All right, you can hear us. Yeah. All right, make, make sure in the comments that people can hear us. I just saw a comment that that we're being that we're being muted, and we don't want that to happen during the calls. All right, but after each call, we will break down. We will uh, give. We will debrief the call so you have the reasons of why you know something was said, uh, and we'll go deep on those. All right. Any bets? Any bets in the comments? Who's going to win? Any bets between us? I have a $500 bet with one of my team members. The first conversation I have, I'm going to set an appointment. I'll bet you $500 that I get the most appointments. You don't know okay. what my script's going to be. so We're on, Dan. Okay, 500 bucks. Uh, you and I have a bet for that. Tom, I don't want to bet with Tom. I'm out of the betting game after buying a $5,000 hot dog purse and also <laughs> doing a Speedo car wash with another guy that I made a bet uh, with. Uh. So... Nobody, there's um, 800 people on here, Tom. No one wants to know, think about that, all right? I, I, luckily, you should have seen me what I looked like when I did the bet. It's much improved since then because I was a big fat ass. So oh, my point is I'm out of the betting game. I'm betting someone can take what we do today and go get an appointment tomorrow. And I think that's the game here for everybody. I know we got a lot of people from our team watching um, and some folks that in our local marketplace. If you're not taking notes and you're not taking this seriously – rarely are you going to get a training like this. This is not classroom. This isn't sales edge. Like Byron said, this is performance. And to me, this is way more in, uh, intense than even doing the live expired role play. Cause that's fake. There's money on the line here. There's that's commission right. checks. And I'm clear. If you take notes, someone's betting a doge coin on me. That's worthless. Thank uh, That's Christine. Thanks, Christine. Uh, so the point is take some notes and bet on yourself and implement this in your business. I love that. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So let, let's jump into it. Uh, who's going to go first? And as we start, biggest success story from everybody real quick on expireds. I mean, because here's the thing. There's there's a fear behind getting into expireds. So people are like, ah, I just I just don't want to make the call because I made a call and it was bad. Uh, best, you know, best experience you ever had. You know, what was the biggest deal you ever took down on an expired? So not only did I buy my first house from an expired uh, and going on the appointment, I, I wound up buying the house myself. But one of the turning points in my business, I used to bring my father around as a fake buyer. And keep in mind, he has the same exact name as me. So his name on his landscape truck would say O'Neill and Wellishar. I brought him with me maybe 20 plus appointments. I finally get caught because he normally parked miles down the road and he parked right in front of the house. Seller sees it, finally puts two and two together that it's my dad. We have the same name. I thought he was going to kick my ass and kick me out of the house. Winds up giving me the listing because of how much of respect he had for that hustle and drive. And then he wound up giving me probably to this day about 60 listings after that. So my first ever listing was from an expired and the house that I personally bought myself was an expired. So I love it. I love it. I, I was talking to uh, some of the team today, had a listing appointment that was, I never met the person. All right. So this was a two and a half million dollar expired. Uh, we got the listing in the low twos. We brought, we got the buyer and sold the listing for just about two million. Never met the seller. Still to this day, never met the seller. The listing appointment was on a follow-up phone conversation. So your next call, your next appointment can always be the best one when you play in this game of calls. And everything that we do, every piece of marketing is designed to get on the phone. So for every bad call that we've had, for every time we get hung up here on the next two hours, there is one of these two million dollar double end deals opportunities that's waiting and listen as professionals for all of you that are on this call right now uh on the video live we can help a lot of people so keep that in mind uh tom what was your biggest deal on these and then and then we're gonna start dialing here i've got two for you one very similar to yours byron never met the seller um it was a prime listing it was about two and a half times our average sale price and what it did for me is it got me into a neighborhood I was trying to get into. It helped me build credibility in an area where I wanted to do more business that hadn't higher average than higher than average sale price. And then we double ended the sale because people were watching the home and they were waiting for it to get priced right and get the right advice. The better win for me was uh, the, the gentleman's name was John. He just referred us his daughter who was buying a property up in the Massachusetts area that we were able to refer out. 
he sent me four separate referrals. And I remember specifically on the call, he goes, well, you don't sell anything at my price point. And this was about 10 minutes from my office. It was around a $700,000 property. And I had just sold another expired down the street. So I was able to get two expired and leverage it into literally 10 transactions. And I'm still getting referral business over a decade later. That's the power of these. Because if you think you know where sellers come from. 65% of people choose their listing agent by referral. So if you come in after another agent screws it up, you're never supposed to be the hero in real estate. You're supposed to be the guide. This is a hero situation because this guy already bought a house. He was moving to North Carolina. He had a deadline. And that enabled me to not only, I had to do the job and perform, but then he trusted me more than you would probably expect and was a raving fan. And if you get enough of those people in your business, then all of a sudden, the appointments, they don't get easier. You get better. And get the better. leads are easier to convert because of the credibility you built with a really hard situation. All right. Let's jump into it. I have right. uh, the Mojo Dialer ready. So if you've used Mojo, I've got a call in from the phone. I'm calling in now. I'll kick it off if you guys, if you guys are cool with that. Yes, sir. You do the honors. Can be found in the They're going to ask me for the PIN number. I'm going to put that in. And listen... Mojo, Vulcan, Red Hat, they're, they're, these are all the same type of things, right? So it, it doesn't matter um, what you're using. Again, I'm going to be doing single line just because of, you know, we want to we want to break these down. We want to make sure we get people on the phone. Triple line goes a lot faster. It's, it's probably something when you're very comfortable. So I'm going to go ahead and press the start button. And here we go. Launch mode, expired calls. Here we go. Let's do it. <clears throat> And as, as this phone here is ringing, guys, you go ahead and get your list ready. Um, and here, here's the thing. Voicemail box not set up. So I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and skip. Well, well no. So now, now me or Tom should go. It should go one dial, one dial, right? Well, I'm, I'm going to let this thing. I'm going to try to get somebody on the phone here. Um, so I'm going to keep moving through <laughs> the list unless you guys want to do dial for dial for dial. I think we do dial for dial. All right. So I'm going to pause mine then and go ahead. If, as long as you All guys right. are ready, go ahead. Yeah, I'm ready. Mind really quick. James says, stay off of uh, his expires. That's the beautiful thing about expires. There's an abundance of them right now as we sit here in January. All it takes is our effort making the calls. Yep. Voicemail. All right, so, so Dan on a voicemail. Go ahead, Tom. Dialing in now. Hang on. Here we go. Man, I'm alive. Classic. Damn it. All right. That's why your right, house so, so here we go. Right? And listen, this is this is calls, right? <laughs> These things happen. We will get we will get people on the calls very quickly. Uh, mm -hmm. So no contact there, and I'm resuming the dialer. I have Wellis. Like I shouldn't be giving people's names. I will not be doing that. Don't do that. No, we have, I don't need it. I get it. Wait, did Tom go? I have a dial going. Tom went. I got one next. Hi, this is Mark. Hi, this is Mark. Uh, Mark, hi, my name's Tom. I'm a local realtor in uh, Downingtown. I was going about your property on Brookhaven Lane. So it came off the market and wanted to see when you plan on interviewing the right agent for the job of selling your home. Okay, so, so uh, I get that you're not interested. So where, where were you guys planning on moving to once the property sold? I had, to, I had to hang up on my voicemail. You always leave a voicemail. I didn't leave one because Tom's in the middle right. of a call. So that guy basically just said not interested after I tried to get him talking on the next question because he's like, hey, who's this? Told him who it was. Said, we're not moving. I said, great. Where were you planning on moving to? And didn't give me anything. So this is someone I would call again in a couple of days because he didn't say, no, I'm not selling. He didn't say, no, this or no, that. But you got to do some follow-up in between. So I was a big fan of like mailing to the mm -hmm. properties, like something very specific with some testimonials. So there's something there because he didn't tell me to buzz off. And he was very polite. I asked twice, you're going to get hung up on, on these calls. So you got to kind of get used to that. And it's a matter of continuing to go. Tom, why would you call him back in a couple of days? I think most agents initial reaction there would be taking him, um, you know, by the letter of like, not interested means never interested. Why have you decided this is somebody who's warm, I'm calling them back in a couple days. Well, well, his home was on the market. He listed with an agent. 
he had people come through the property. That tells me there's motivation no matter what. And most agents do stop calling after the first couple of days. And I've had a lot of success being the last agent standing. People have told me that you followed up when no one else did. And where's all the conversion happened, Byron? Six plus attempts. That's and right. the average agent only follows up 2.7 times. So this isn't dead. This is, it's a maybe. I'll take a maybe. I didn't get no. I got not interested. Who knows? Another voicemail. Leave your name and number, and I'll call you back. All right, I'm going to go here. I've got one dialing up, too. Hi, how are you doing? Um, this is Dan O'Neill with Signature. So Dan's leaving a voicemail. Always leave a voicemail. I'm sorry. The person you are trying to reach has a voicemail box that has not been set up yet. Please try your call. And now with the dialer, for, for those familiar with the dialer, I just press no contact, no, no voicemail. I can't leave a voicemail. I move on to the next one. Uh, Pam? Yeah, sounds like I might have the wrong number here. Yes. Chris says, can we hear a voicemail? Absolutely. We'll, we'll, we're going to do a voicemail. Yeah, I'll do the next one. Uh, sure. My, my name's uh, Tom. I'm, I'm a local realtor in Downingtown, and I was coming about our uh, property she had for some Hi, well, Aspiring Lazine. I have a question about your home. Please give me a call back when you can. 860-941-2755. Oh, thank you. Uh, 484-297. We can hear you, Tom. <laughs> uh, 970. <laughs> Tom, Tom, Tom trying to... Stop his yes. call there, his phone number. But um, thanks so much. Hello, hello, uh, Vilmos. Yes. How are you? Uh, this is Byron Lazine. I'm just quickly. I don't want to take a lot of your time. I'm Byron Lazine with the one team at William Ravis, and I noticed your home is no longer on the market, and I'm calling to see if you're still having any thoughts of selling the property. I have my assets taken care of. Yeah, and, and so you got it understood. Your, your realtor is taking care of it. Uh, they had it on the market, and then they did not sell it. Do you still want to ultimately get to your goal of securing the sale on the property? Yeah, of course. I mean, I want to sell it, but like I said, my dad was putting back to the market. Uh, I think she's doing it now. Yeah, you think she is? Right now, it's showing not sold and not actively being marketed what's your time frame yeah. what's your time frame to move out of the home and have the home sold i mean it's no time frame no. okay so so not in a rush but you you would like it sold for your asking price am i right yeah so so vilmos why, why do you think if you tried it with this agent once why do you think your home did not sell Oh, I understand. So, so has any has anyone? You know, this. It sounds like you guys are, are friends or friendly. Um, has this friend or anyone, for that matter, told you exactly why your home didn't sell? Tom's taking the jacket off. <laughs> yeah, no, I totally get that. There's, there's definitely some market restrictions right now with just what's happening in the economy. But I got to tell you, there's home selling. And if I can show you why your home didn't sell for your asking price and how to get the exposure on it in today's market, would it be, would it be of interest to you to hear me out on that? Byron might get the first one. Yeah, no, I'd love to call you back. This is going to be the best number for you. 
Great. And, and, and I'll definitely call you back. What's the best time to do that? And what's your email, Vilmos? <laughs> Okay. All right. Can you just repeat that back one more time? Let's go. That's huge. Perfect. So I've got that. What's going to be the best time for us to have the phone call tomorrow? Same time is good. And uh, you're open to hiring an agent who can get you your asking price or more to actually complete the job that you set out to com to do. Is that right? But, but you're open to getting the home sold when you relist for your, for your price, right? Byron's very, where, where are you, by the way, where are you going next? He needs a smile. Where are you going to be moving to next? People can hear you smile over the phone. Yes. There we go. <laughs> we do need to hey, lose Vilmos. the headsets on the calls. Vilmos, you there? <laughs> Hello? Was that Tom Tool on the other <laughs> Vilmos, did I lose you? Hey, Vilmos, I'm not sure if you, if, if you can hear me. Maybe you muted on your end. I'm going to return that call tomorrow, uh, same time, and I'm looking forward to speaking with you. Oh, yeah. Give me that back. So I think <laughs> what happened here. Great job. I mean, that that's all right. Uh, that's getting down the path. There's follow-up. Okay. Yeah, but, but it, here, here's what happened. Okay. Um, my phone is still dialing. I'm going to pause that real quick so we can debrief this. Unfortunately, I didn't realize it. This is, you know, this is the beauty of doing these things live to hopefully add some value here. I had my headphone right here and I got the phone here. So Dan, you started chirping me <laughs> about the smiling and, and Vilmos, I think he heard you. Hey, uh, because <laughs> he went silent after that. You, I don't know. You guys could hear this, some of the back and forth maybe oh, a little God. bit. But but um, all right. So here, here's the deal with this guy. Uh, here's somebody who is pretty close to his agent. He referred to his agent as the partner. So I referred to the agent more as a friend, right? Because, Tom, w what do we know about working with friends? Well, sometimes people – Hire their friends to try to help their friend with their business instead of hiring the best possible agent to get the home sold. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's where I want to use the language of, listen, you, you want to hire, you want to move forward with this agent to get the job done that you hired them to do, which is sell it at your price or potentially more by exposing this to more people in the market. Uh, we did get a follow-up call. Okay. So uh, I've set an appointment with this individual for tomorrow it is a very loose appointment it's a phone call appointment it's not a listing appointment so i guess i did lose the 500 dollars to dan and to lee on my team because i said to them i would set a listing appointment i wish he didn't drop off that call because i feel like i had him i still feel like i could have reeled him in there uh, as i worked around some of his motivation i would have had a hard sell by the way if he stayed on that call I would have had a freaking hard sell of getting the appointment. Now I paused any hard selling to get that email. Okay. I got the email. He said, <laughs> Hey, let's commit to a call tomorrow. I don't want to break pattern there. I want to commit to what he just said. Let's do the call. I took a step back. Same time works. We'll do the call tomorrow. I got the email. So I've secured data from this individual. Uh, th this is a, a neighborhood with a really high price point. That was a high price point, by the way, uh, in Connecticut. And so I want to step back and honor what he said. Had he stayed on the call, had he not heard Dan chirping me in the ear, I would have gone for a definitive two to three time ask for a face-to-face mm -hmm. -face meeting. 
I just want to chime in here. I'm getting a lot of comments about why aren't we playing these on speakerphone. So some states that's illegal to do. So I know I like it. We, we, I, I, everyone wants to hear it. I get it. Uh, we just can't do it. So yeah. I, I don't know what else to say. Trust me when I say this is not stage. This is, this is the, real, the real deal here. All right, I'm, I'm going to go for one right now. This is a high price point too. Uh, let's see. Six, three. You got to get a dialer, man. Like, are you manually dialing these things? Yeah. Well, I, it, equity, buddy. Rookie move. Because I'm pausing the dialer so much, like I just looked down and said live. I'm like, oh, no, is there somebody on the phone this whole time? <laughs> this, this, is, this is wild. Okay. I'm oh, nervous. Nobody's picking up the phone. Maybe it's a time, 4.30. This is prime time. Uh, uh, 6, 6.30. What the hell? <clears throat> All right, you got voicemail you want me to dial here? Yeah, yeah. Someone's calling me back right now. This could be any of the ones that I just called. This is going to. All right, go ahead with the call back. Hello, this is Dan. I'm, I'm calling you back regarding a house for sale in Stony Brook. Oh, yes. How you doing? Good. I'm sorry. I just um, I called that there was two that I had reached out to. Is this uh, over on Spalding? Oh, right, right, right. This is Hillside, correct? Right. Oh, beautiful home. How long have you guys been there for? 18. Why the heck are you leaving? Okay. Collecting awesome. the motiv the motivation. So Pro my probably we'll use that I, later I have in the a, uh, an office, right? I guess in Stony Brook, right next to the, uh, the gas station and uh, Bliss, if you're familiar with it. Um, Sounds like a nice place. I, I did grow up in the area. I went toward Melville myself. I recently bought and sold my own home over in Miller Place just because it was kind of too far out of the way. So I'm actually renting right now in Port Jeff, if you're familiar with like Danford's, those two new buildings. And I absolutely hate it. Uh, and I'm by myself. So I'm looking for something that's kind of tiny, like beach vibe, if that makes sense. And this is right in my price point. So um, I was wondering to see if there's any way that I could set up an appointment for this weekend. There's not a ton of photos online. Um, wondering, you know, kind of what the taxes are. So, okay, okay. And do you pay uh, for the beach association as well? Okay. Okay. Twenty years realtor. Who who do you have your license with? <laughs> now it's recruit. Listen, actually, one of my first expired ever. Tom, I don't know if Tom, you can hear me. I'm listening. One of my first expired listings ever was another well, realtor. When you go down to no. Jersey City if you're not doing the short sales anymore. You, you have a friend in me now. <laughs> don't don't discount. <laughs> um, well, well, that's awesome. So then, so you know, agents the, who uh, may list their home with you if you've no got a better marketing. Right now, and and like I said, I'm driving myself nuts paying four thousand dollars a month over here in Port Jeff, and I'm in I don't know eight hundred square feet. So I I'm looking for a little bit of a, a bachelor pad, you know, if that makes sense. Um, and I love I grew up in the area, so you know I would love to be close to West Meadow. Um, is there a, a basement? Oh, there is finished or, or unfinished partial. partial. Okay. And then I see the garage, I believe. Oh, really? Is it? Okay. All right. Well, that's fair. I mean, I could always redo that. Um, any other like capital improvements that you've done over the years or. Okay. It, was that through the town or mom's the, eh, well, maybe you don't mom's the word and I'm not going to be the one that, that tells on you. <laughs> hey, um, well, so I, I don't want to keep you long. Would there be any way, again, my office is literally two minutes away. Are you free anytime this weekend? Maybe like Saturday morning or, or around like 11 or 12. 
would you want to say 11 o'clock? Is that okay? And I'll, I'll send you over all my information too, my, my business card. That way, you, you know, you know, it's coming over. It's not a stranger. Danny Deal's getting himself on the books now. Yes, yeah, Seven Hillside, and I will see you Saturday at 11 a.m. And I'm going to text you over. Is this your cell phone? I don't know if this is an Perfect. agent on Dan's team or if this is, you know. And uh, I will see you Saturday morning. Person. Thank you so much. Have a great day. All right, so Dan has set an appointment. Now, now Dan, that, that sounded like a – Who, had, who had 500 on me? Um, I don't know, but that was a for sale by owner, not a expired, or was that an expired? It was an Which expired. Who, who, who had 500 on me, huh? Woo! Okay. No, so, there, there's woo! a lot of comments here. Is Dan being deceptive? And the answer to me is definitively no. He no. is looking for a home. I think this is really important. Why not leverage your situation? Yeah. I bought my home that I live in right now when it got withdrawn. And I, I mean, I, I had to reach out to the agent because of the laws here, but I'm clear I got a better number on it. And once that thing came off the market, I had leveraged. So I think this is very smart. And I'd be leveraging your own situation as much as possible. I and have again, this is how I bought my own my first yes. house. This is yeah. truly how I bought my house. So I am sticking close to the truth. I could do this in Florida as well. And anyone that's in here, you should be able to do this with your team leader or your broker owner anyway, because we should all be investing in real estate to begin with. Yeah, I, I bought a house three years ago in Connecticut that uh, I bought direct from the owners. Now, before I moved into this house, before I purchased this, this home, I was doing what Dan just did and I was setting up appointments. I'm thinking of a property uh, five minutes from here during that journey of finding that house that I was able to um, set the appointment because I was looking for myself. So if you have a buy box, whether it's investment or something you're looking for yourself, you should absolutely be hammering those calls uh, for yourself as like just set. Those are the easiest appointments to set up. Then you get in there. Maybe it doesn't work for you, for your investment or for your purchase. And then you turn that into a, a listing opportunity. I think Tom is dialing now. We'll, we'll, we'll have Tom go um, as he gets somebody on. Or do you want me to dial, Tom? I'm dialing. Okay. I got it right here in the, in the earpiece. Money, 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 money. I mean, Dan chirping me screwed me over on. Oh, I'm sure that's what it was. Oh, I had the guy right there. But I mm -hmm. do have the follow up appointment for tomorrow. So I, I am one appointment, one email in. It's I'm one for one, too. You are one for one. You are, you are one see, for one. You have an appointment this weekend. And Dan, I'd love for you to document that one. I definitely will. Let's see these comments. I probably just got smoked. That woman was an agent, by the way. You like how I overcame that objection? Because that's a classic. Oh, oh, so been... as, as, as Tom's uh, dialing, I don't know if you heard me. One of my first expired listings was another agent. It was in North Stonington. Mm. And she is like, you know, I'm an agent, right? And I'm like, no, I don't. Because I just started and I've never heard of you, right? And and she didn't, you know, she wasn't an active agent. She She wasn't doing really any business and she uh, said hi, well is this, uh, is this uh uh joseph oh wrong number sorry about that so she said why don't you come over and at least see the house maybe you'll have a buyer not whatever and go over there and by the time i get over there she had looked me up you know googled me saw that i was very active at the time on facebook video because you know this is going back 10 years from now and she ended up listing the property with me. It was my I highest did. listing at the time. It was my highest sale. And um, listen, that. you don't know where any of these appointments are going to go. Okay. So whether it's an agent or not, that agent may be somebody who sells you their book of business in two years by creating the relationship. So Dan, this could be a great appointment for you. She might be working, working with you at some point. She may list her home. She may do a lot of business with you. You just don't know where it's going to go. She may start referring people to your team. There's mm -hmm. so many different outcomes that this one appointment can create for you. And, and they're and all she valuable. Too, that she, um, she's she been focusing oh, on like short sales it. and she's going to be moving to Jersey City uh, soon. So I made the joke of like, hey, well, that. if you move to Jersey City, you got someone, you know, you got a friend in me. And yeah. she left. Referrals, right? there's, there's so much there. Tom, do you have somebody or do you want me to start dialing? Uh, give me one more here. Okay. I'm trying to read these comments. People are chirping me. I didn't tell her I was an agent. Yes, I did. Literally, that was the first thing I said. <clears throat> and just to be clear, Dan's not making cold calls. These are people already that have been in his database at some point. 
Yeah. Hi, Brian. My name's Tom. I'm a local realtor in uh, because Lower of the New York. I was calling about your property on Youngsford. I saw it came off the market and wanted to see when you plan on interviewing the right agent for the job of selling your home. See the karate chop from Tom. <laughs> how many? Uh, how many? Yeah, it was on the MLS. Looks like it expired from the market uh, on the 31st here. Uh, James, Tom's using Mike Ferry. I'm using a Tom Ferry script. Dan's got his okay, own. Okay, got it. Yeah, it looks like, you know what? Now that I'm seeing this here, it looks like it, it was listed a couple times. It might have been a faulty listing. So I uh, appreciate you letting me know that. I'll, I'll make a note. Um, at, uh, like I said, I live right in the area. So while I got you, uh, who do you know that's looking to buy or sell a home in the next six months that might need some help? Tom, I'm the All right, well. Congrats on the new, I mean, I live not, not far from you. So it's a great neighborhood. Excited for you guys. So how, how are you liking the place so far? Very cool. Well, some changes are, yeah, I, I, I get, I, yeah, well, that's good. That's good to hear. So if something changes, uh, certainly, uh, you know, feel free to reach out and I'll make a note here that, uh, you bought the place and it was a faulty listing. Yep. Thanks. Take care. All right, so this happens a lot. I don't know. Uh, so, hold on. The guy, he bought the home, and the agent had it listed like three different ways. So I always go for, can we get a referral? Because, it. It. you know, it, I mean, it, it, it's always worth it. You got him on the phone. So super nice. Unfortunately, not a seller. I usually keep the MLS up while I'm doing this, but it was tough to tell. It wasn't recorded properly. So all the more reason you got to call a lot of people. I, I got Mojo dialing right now, so we'll see what happens here. I'm reading these comments. I'm getting called an Atlanta Braves fan because I'm downswinging when you're supposed to. No, no. Tell them cool. what the downswing is. Tell so them where you, you – You said you had a marked up script, Byron, right? So I do. I have a marked up – through, right? Well, mine is too. I, I did that, but it's – when you point to yourself, it says, when do you plan on interviewing the right agent, right? Instead of saying, sitting here all slumped over, hey, when do you plan on interviewing the right agent? You know, or when you plant one and then when uh, for selling the home, most people upswing at the end of a question and it sounds like they're questioning themselves. The downswing is meant to deliver confidence. So that's what that's for. <clears throat> How many people do we have on this right now? Maybe Lee in the comments. Lee, who who just set an eight hundred thousand dollar listing appointment yesterday on our team using this Mojo list that I'm using. Maybe Lee in the comments can tell me why I am not hearing a dial right now. You, you typically don't hear a dial on right. these things, okay. so I can That's tell you what that. I thought. All right, you don't need Lee for. I might have put too many too many dials in is what I so and while Byron's doing this, if you can do us a favor, like the video and you know give us some love here if you're liking what you're seeing because I am down for doing this again. I don't know about the boys here, but I'm happy to make I'm this down. a regular thing. My phone's actually blowing up. A lot of people are texting me some very positive things. That's awesome. It's like the first time that's probably happened to you. In what like twelve months? Now? Uh, yeah. Why don't you keep keep getting undressed, Tom? I'll keep I'll keep oh, setting place a business. You keep you keep not leaving a message there. You know, I'm the only one that actually set a listing appointment so far. Yeah. If you include the walkthrough last week. <laughs> All right, I'm uh, I'm next, right? Yes. Yeah, I got mine dialing. Just in, I mean, let's dial. We'll we'll mute up anyone that. And that was a callback too. That was that was great. That's why you always leave the message. You, you're uh, not Byron, a secret you, agent. Are you? Uh, you're not on Byron. I'm dialing. All right, let me call. Another. Uh, Hi, John. Oh, yes. Byron Lazine. I'm a local real estate agent. I have a question about your home in Waterford. Please give me a call back. 860-941-2755. Thank you. <coughs> you always leave a message. I have a question about your home, right? The question is, are you still having thoughts of selling the property? Hi, how you doing? Um, is this the owner of a 21... How you doing? I've never heard this this high pitch from Dan before. Hello. Dan O'Neill, uh, I'm calling in regards to the property. I, I saw it a few months back, um, and I've actually lived in the area too. Um, I noticed that it said something about. 
<laughs> it comes up that way because I'm still on my my stepfather's phone plan, <laughs> trying to save money any way I can. <laughs> that's that's. I disagree with Phil there, Nikki. That's my stepfather's name, yes. <laughs> that's funny. I also disagree with Phil. No, you don't sorry, Emma. Frank Christelli? <laughs> oh, that, wow, my aunt Terry. That's crazy. Are you a uh, were you a Stony Brook police officer? Stage calls here. Wow. So do you, you know Raph? You know you know everyone then, huh? R Raph was my baseball coach for ten years. He's actually down in Conway, Myr uh, Myrtle Beach, right now, living the dream. That's where I went to college. He really is. Um, well, so anyway, so oh, of course I do. Eddie was also one of my coaches, and his son, or I, I think it's his son, is uh, I played baseball with him over at Ward Melville. That a boy, Eddie. So both, I, I am an agent, uh, but I did notice that when you had it up online, it said that it was an investor special or, or a flipper's dream. And I have a ton of people. Yeah. And, and I have a ton of people that I'm working with and I drive past it almost every day. So th there's not really any pictures online that I could find. So I was wondering if either you could send over pictures or now that you, you, you know <laughs> me, you kind of trust me, if there'd be any way that I can maybe swing by this weekend, if you have any time. No, that, that's totally fine. That's no worries at all. People do not believe these are real calls from Dan O'Neill. Oh, these are 100% totally real. If there's I, any I, way that, that I could swing by, I don't know, maybe like Saturday at 10 if you're free. Now, Dan's birdies on the golf course, are those real? No, okay. absolutely. absolutely. All right, so I'm going to shoot you over a text with, uh, with my information. Uh, I'm going to tell, <laughs> I'm gonna tell Frank that, uh, that I spoke to you. I just saw him for Christmas, and I'll see you Saturday at 10. I mean, he, they, they go back and forth. You know who he is. He, he sits home all day. He's got the NHL packet. He watches the Bruins all day. He puts a you know a tin in his mouth, and, and he's living his life. He, that, that's, that's how they are, you know? Uh, yeah. only, only on the island. All right. Well, anyway, I'm going to tell him that I spoke to you. That was really it's funny. A small world. And, and I'll see you Saturday morning at 10. All right. I'll see you then. You got it. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Bye. Uh, Dan, what was that? A third cousin you just set an appointment with? Well, what's going on here? Hey, first of all, that happens more than you think. If you're agree. in your community, I'm just, that's I'm happened to me before. I'm what are the odds of that? He, first of all, he starts like he's already angry. He's like, "Why? If your name is Dan, how come Anthony Rosselli's on the like? Why is it coming up?" Well, Truth for me, I'm on my parents' cell phone bill. The only thing that I still have left. Turns out he worked with my uncle Frank. They were both police officers together. And I now have an appointment Saturday at 10 and Saturday at 11. Back to back. Well, you better keep that 10, 10 o'clock tight and keep it right. All right, uh, Tom, are you dialing or am I, or am I back on? <laughs> but Dan, very, very loose, you know, still professional, but you, you, we couldn't hear the other end, mm -hmm. but you were creating a relationship there. There was rapport that was being built. And at the end of the day, that's the point. The point of the phone calls, there's one point to calling expired listings it's to generate an appointment if you can't generate an appointment number two it's to get an email and to get a call back time okay mm -hmm. this is the sole purpose of making these calls dan got himself an appointment now whether they list that house whether they have a relationship for this individual to be thinking of only dan o'neill in the future when it comes to real estate anything can happen now on Saturday at 10 well, And this is great too, because this, this gentleman was, was saying that it's a, a flippers, right? It's like a, a flippers dream house or an investor special. So I could go there and potentially showcase it and bring it to one of my investors that I work with, like a Charles handsome home buyer, whoever. There, there's a lot of questions that are great questions. How do you get their number? I'm using Mojo. Dan, what did you use to generate that number? That was uh Volcom. That was Vulcan. Yeah. Tom is using Vulcan or and Vulcan. Mojo. Vulcan He's using Vulcan so far. And, and so, so they'll populate a bunch of numbers for you when you subscribe to these different services for expireds in your market. They're connected to the MLS. Uh, some data will populate. Listen, there's a lot of different ways to get numbers. You want to do it legally. You want to do it ethically. Uh, you, this filters out people that are on the do not registry. So we're not calling people on the do not call registry. I want to be super clear there. <clears throat> Correct. Somebody had just asked that. Do you call numbers on the do not call registry? No, no, no we do not. 
I think uh, it's also important to, remember, to know too, like, and Tom is really empowering you too, like the objections, just being confident in those, like you never know what people are going to say. First person said that they were an agent. That person's calling me out hey, for my name. Like, I'm taking any appointment, even if it's an agent. Chris asked, do you use PropStream? Absolutely. Uh, I'm happening to be calling because we're going specifically on expireds on Mojo right now, but the majority of our cold calls will use PropStream. We have a link for PropStream if um, somebody can can throw that in there. And All right. Byron, uh, so, we have 1,200 people on here right now. You should. Uh, everyone should throw me a like, please. Throw, if you, if you like Dan, let it, let us know how much you like Dan. Would love for you to hit subscribe. We're gonna do more of these. There's a lot of great questions that we're probably not gonna get to tonight in between these calls, but we're gonna do more of these call it, here during quarter one. Who in the comments wants to see more phone calls? Whether it's specifically for Fizbos, whether this is the first time we've done a large, you know, three people expired. We're going to figure out the right formula for these. If you want to see more calls, let us know. Somebody drop Dan's IG in there. Somebody wants Dan's IG. Uh, drop his IG and, and, and subscribe to this YouTube channel. This is where you're going to get real live calls on BAM. Dan is not unmatched, Angela. Just, uh, just hang in here for us. We, we got a whole other hour of calls. My, I, I don't have any time left. I, my, my Saturday is already booked up. This is crazy. Oh, you got Sunday. <laughs> I do have Sunday, right? <laughs> Jeff Mays would be proud. All right. Uh, somebody's asking me to do a Florida one. I could do that. It's actually even easier. Yeah, they're usually home. This time this time of night, they're home in Florida. Yeah, if you if you catch my drift. No, that went over my head. I didn't I didn't understand that actually. <laughs> Tom, look how look Tom is like sweating. This guy <laughs> Can you hear us or no? Yes, I can hear you. It looks Tom like you're your capstone 500 thesis for, you, for your master's degree right now. So, <laughs> so I disagree with um, – I always leave a message. Always. Unless their mailbox is full, then you literally can't. All right. Let's do one here in Florida. So on Mojo, it allows me to just hit no contact, and, and it starts to <laughs> dial the next contact. Oh, this is a beauty. All right, let me know when I'm up. So I'm, I'm making a ton right. of dials here and dropping voicemails. Why don't you guys just roll? I'm dying. All right, right ready to go. And, and there's a lot of questions about the do not call list. You cannot call the do not call list. Like, I don't, I don't think you want to say it any other way. These things will screen it out. It's just something you don't do. You cannot, should not, do not call the do not call list. Maybe put that in the on bam side maybe put that in the subject of this video we do not call the do not call list what do you do when they ask where you got their number it's public record public information internet. yeah whoever bet on me is about to win a lot of money all right let me know when i'm up i got a good one Hi, this call is for Deborah. My name is Byron Lazine, the one team here locally, and calling uh, to have a question on your property in Clinton. You can call me back, 860-941-2755. Thank you. Be well. All right, I'm up. Somebody asked me to do one in Florida, so that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> uh, Devin, I would not call the DNC list. That I know you said Dan's buddy, Ricky, uh, kind of promotes the DNC list. I don't know. I, I, I don't. I don't agree with that. I need to get in a rhythm here. I think Ricky's pretty ethical on, on these deals. Um, I just had a mailbox full. I, I recognize that name. Sometimes names that pop up, you recognize them, right? I think there was a. A relation there to somebody at the my call. name is dan o'neill um, i'm calling in regards to the unit that you have for sale over in st petersburg um, i'm coming from new york and potentially looking to buy something down there as i just started up a real estate yeah, office and brokerage group. if you wouldn't mind giving me a call back my number is 631-384-8611 again my name is dan o'neill and my number is 631-384-8611 thank you so much have a great day god bless Hi, this is Byron Lazine. Uh, I'm with the one team at William Ravis. I have a question about your property in Milford. If you can give me a call back, 860-941-2755.
Thanks and be well. That was a good price point one. I wish I had a pick up there, but I always leave a message. Leave a message that will entice a callback. I have a question about your property. My question happens to be, are you still having thoughts of selling the property? I want to know about the motivation. <clears throat> I'm doing a Florida one. Nobody's answering. Huh? Another good price point here. Hi, Joe. Byron Lazine with the one team at William Ravis. I have a question about your property in Deep River. Uh, when you get a chance, give me a call back. 860-941-27. Five five. Thanks and be well. I just did a Tom tool there trying to. I don't think that really works. Blocking the mic for. <laughs> I need to get in a rhythm. By here. the way, I got twenty four dials. I need to get some more people on the phone. By the way, this A six zero number. Anybody <laughs> wants to call it? It's going to be going to my ISA team in in uh, twenty four hours. So I was about to say, good thing Byron's got seven phones, sicko. You'll be talking to them. I do. I've got. I got a bunch of phones here. Hi, hi, Louise. Hi, this is Byron Lazine. I'm with. The one team at William Ravis Real Estate, and I don't want to take up a lot of your time tonight, but uh, I noticed your property on in Chester was on the market and no longer is, and I'm calling to see if you still have any thoughts of selling the property. I got you. I got you. So you're going to keep the same age. And hey, Louise, before you go, I, I'm just super curious. I love to say that again. Oh, good. Great. No, that's that's perfect. I'm just super curious. I, I love digging into data. I love Chester. Good grief, Charlie Brown. Um, why do you think – I'm curious here in the market with, with how everything has gone. Why do you think your home did not sell? You had it on the market. Looks like a beautiful property. Just based off of you being a homeowner in a great area, great property, why do you think your home did not sell? You're taking the blame. Congratulations. That's exciting to, to have somebody interested. I'm surprised you, you, you didn't. Perfect. Perfect. So you had a couple offers and uh, you decided not to take them. And then, and then now you think one of these is going to come together. When you, when you sell this home, um, if you get it sold this time, where are you thinking? I'm just curious. Where are you going? You staying in state or going out of state? <laughs> nice, Florida. I have a place in uh, Naples, Florida myself. Where in Florida are you? You're in Naples? No kidding. I'm right. I'm right between airport pulling and. And Livingston. So it's like North Naples area. Oh, Quail Creek's nice. You golf over there? <laughs> nice. I, I'm over at uh, Tiburon. We should maybe, maybe you and I should link up, play a little golf. Yeah. Hey, yeah, hey, before I let you go, do you, do you mind me following up with you and, and, and checking how this is going for you? I mean, since we're neighbors in Naples. No, no, I won't. I won't do that. What's what's uh, what's is, is this going to be the best cell phone number for you? This this uh, 413 number? Yeah. All right. Good. And hey, what's your uh, what's your email? I'm sorry, you cut out there. Can you, you just repeat that one time? Awesome. And hey, what are you uh you up in Connecticut or are you down down in Naples right now? Hey, I'm gonna be I'm I'm up in Connecticut for a couple of days, but I'll be back Friday. You open to you and I grabbing coffee? I'll be back in town Thursday night. Yeah, so this Friday or this weekend. Are you open to a coffee? I'll send you a text to this four one three number and we'll get a, a coffee date for the weekend. All right. Thanks, Luis.
Oh, yeah. So. Don't let them find I'm pausing out. Mojo here. Um, oh you guys would be surprised. So let's just back up here and debrief that one. That was a great conversation. That's a $1.1 $1. million home. Uh, I'll definitely, absolutely, I've got my notes here. I'll be contacting Luis. Very much not open to a, a meeting because he turned down offers. And so he basically told me there. He was blaming himself for – you know, not taking one of those offers. Here's the tricky part. And this is where I was a little, I was a lot less aggressive than I would have been. He told me that, Hey, I am working with, or, or I had been working with an agent who's affiliated with the same brokerage. Okay. So, um, I, I don't want to go and, and push real hard when I hear that information, but that's why I started to ask him questions to just open up. Let's just open up and see where this goes because that might be a defense mechanism. I've got to dig deeper and find out. Okay. Uh, so I, that's where I asked them, you know, where are you going next? And then we found that commonality it just so happened. Listen, this is how it happens. I don't know. Naples is like a freaking gold mine for people. Everybody's moving down there. He's got a property in Naples. He's down there. Okay. So he knew the roads I was talking about airport in Livingston. That's where I live. He lives in Quail Creek. I love Quail Creek. I, I love an opportunity to golf on Quail Creek. Maybe this guy will get me on there. And maybe him and, I will, maybe him and I will be trading courses back and forth. You never know where this goes, right? But we found that commonality, and, and you couldn't hear the other end of the call. But he was much more receptive to the conversation. Uh, I will be texting him, and I'll be getting a coffee meeting here on this weekend. And listen, he's got a $1.1 .1 million house in our market here in Connecticut. He's got somebody hot. Me and him get face to face and he likes the vibe and he likes the, the ability for us to sell his property, to actually close that deal, to close the gap for the number that he wants and the number that that, that other party is at. We may get that deal. His listing is expired. It's a free agent. It's on the open market. Okay. So this weekend I'll be working for that listing. I got somebody. And I got his email. Grab an email, grab a follow-up meeting. Uh, I'm a local agent over in, uh, actually, Stony Brook. Um, I saw the house that was listed. Um, I noticed that it's uh, in the M section. So it's been on the market for 10 days, Devon Ranch. Um, are you guys still showing? Do you have any accepted offers? Ryan, I just brought a, bought a new uh, fifty eight degree. Okay, when when do you think you'll you'll accept something by? Oh, can you can you make it four? <laughs> I said, can you make it four? <laughs> so, I uh, so I, I grew up in the area. Uh, I've sold a ton over there, uh, MS section, everything. Um, but as you know, there's literally nothing on the market inventory wise. I see here. I mean, the kitchen looks brand new. The hardwood floors, I believe, quartz countertops. And, and I see it. Greg says, let's tee it up in the comments. Who wants to do a golf mastermind? Eric will, will collect. Wow. If Eric's doing anything right now, he should collect names for a golf mastermind. I'm out. I, everything, everything looks brand new. With me, Dan, and Eric, not Tom. Congratulations. Where, where are you guys heading? Sarasota he's doing really well here is he's looking at the listing and explaining it. I think that's a really key strategy here. You want to have a couple screens up with <laughs> what so you're looking at because most people are like, you never showed my property or anything else. So I love this. Yeah. Yeah. That's so funny. Sarasota. Wow. Yeah. So yeah. I'm long story short. Uh, I grew up in the area. Uh, I bought a house in Miller place. It was too far. Sold it. I'm in Port Jeff. I'm buying something down in Sarasota, St. Pete area. And, uh, and I'm looking to get back into Stony Brook. Um, I don't have wife or kids or anything, but I'm looking for something that I just don't have to do any work to. I could just shut the door and, and head down to Florida. So if it's okay with you, I, that's what I'm looking at right now. So this is it on the side? Cause I, I'm familiar with the Devon ranch, but so. Oh, wow. 
So so they're so they're good. You wouldn't have to. I wouldn't have to vet them or anything, right? So like they're. I mean, if they've been there for twenty years, I wouldn't have to do any vetting or anything. They're. I mean, I guess. I'm looking at these live comments. Derek, Eric's mad at himself. Same person he's mad at every day. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Hey, the, the siding and windows look new too. Did, did you do the siding and windows and roof? Amy, I agree. I wish we could hear the other person's responses. We're just uh, yeah, following everything. the laws in each each state, unfortunately. Wow. Yeah, absolutely. And what are you guys paying in... Um, what are you guys paying in taxes? Yeah, well, that, that makes sense for, for the neighborhood. Shay says he saw Byron Golf. That was criminal editing on Dan's part. Okay. And uh, no basement, right? Okay. And the living room looks huge. Is, is this pink bathroom? Is this yours? <laughs> the pink bathroom, I'm guessing that's, that's yours. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I mean, it looks that way. What, what time are you, um, like, what time are the appointments tomorrow? Is there any way that I, I mean, again, I, my office is, if you're familiar with 25A, my office is right next to the gas station and, and Bliss. Um, it's where Dan gets all his vapes. Oh, let me let me look at my um. Hold on, let's see. Um. Yeah, yes, yeah. <laughs> the, I, the I would probably be able to do like two or three if that works for you. You want you want to say two o'clock and I can send you over my my information. I have to be at a uh, Ohika Castle, which is in the middle of no man's land at five. So I, I would have to do it like two o'clock if that's okay. And I, and I live right here. I live right in Port Jeff. So Tom, they're chirping you in the comments. Dan is very natural. Tom and I, I are, are a little more fine. traditional in the scripting. I think is that is that the pink the pink bathroom? I'm I'm looking at a I'm looking at a pink Dial bathroom. Like here. Uh, pink bathroom again. I, I'm looking at. If I get somebody on, we're just going to mute the hell out of Dan. <laughs> okay. Maybe it could be just, it could be Zillow. It could be, it could be, you know, the expired. Oh my God. Did, did... Hi, Shelly. Mute Dan. You guys, you guys cook? Hi, Shelly. Seen... Hey, this is Byron Lazine. I'm with the one team at William Ravis. I don't want to take up a bunch of your time tonight, but I'm looking at your property in Hamden and I'm just curious. It was on the market. It no longer is. And I'm calling to see if you still want to sell the property. You're going to start renting. I see it's got two units. You're getting good income from renting that. Yeah. You're enjoying the landlord process. <laughs> it's a hard deal, right? It's not easy. Hey, what? Hey. Okay, so you had somebody interested, and then and then the financials fell through. If if you got that number when it was under contract, would you have followed through and sold the property? You were excited about the number. Yeah, you like the number. Good, good. So, why do you think? Why do you think the? Why do you think the finances fell through? What do you think the problem was with the first property for the first deal? Oh, okay. Okay. If you could get the home marketed to qualified buyers who can follow through on their commitment to purchase the property at that price, would you still sell the, the property? Would you still sell this deal? And get, and get what you have. You had it under contract at your number. Would, would you sell it again at that number? Great. I Listen. I can get this exposed to more people than you did last time that are qualified and can actually close on this deal 
Shelly, when can you meet to talk about it? Before <coughs> I will generate cash offers. I will generate every offer that is qualified, cash and mortgage, baby. It all clears the same way. So Shelly, if, if I can get you somebody who is actually qualified, who can commit to closing, won't fall out of the deal like the last one, would you be open to a 15 minute conversation so I can show you exactly how me and my team can get this job done for you? No, not right now. I can't, I can't run over there right now either, but how about, how about tomorrow after one or Friday after one? Does either of those work for you? Yeah, I, I listen. I'm not surprised you're getting a lot of calls. I'm, I mean, agents are going to be coming out of, out of the woodwork. But if I can just come by Thursday or Friday after one, I'll show you exactly how to get the price that you had locked in. Because Shelly, you and I both agree you want that number, right? And you deserve it. It's your property. It's your it's your dirt. It's your wood. It's your investment. This is going to be a, a two family for somebody else to go and take on the hassle of being a landlord. If I can show you exactly how to hit your number, would it be worth your time? Great. And, and I'd love to give you that time and earn the opportunity to work for you and get this job done for you. Thank you. I thank you for the opportunity to, to let you know who I am. I appreciate that. I'm Byron Lazine. I'm team leader of the one team at William Ravis. And listen, Shelly, a lot of agents are calling you probably and telling you how they're number one. I'll bring over the MLS sheet and show you how many homes we've sold this year. It's the most in the entire state <laughs> of Connecticut. It's 681 homes. I'm looking at your property. This is a great investment deal for somebody. Your home at your price should be sold. This should be already closed if you had gotten it in front of the qualified buyers. And I want to just show you if you got 15 minutes. And by the way, Shelly, I'll send you I'll, I'll send you an email with with any information before we meet so that you have the information uh, on exactly who I am. How many units did you commit to to, lead, to renting? So you, you're thinking about going back to being a landlord. You committed to the second? Yeah. <coughs> okay. And what kind of lease is what kind of lease is the first floor on? So that's month to month on the first floor, Shelley. If somebody's going to buy this as a pure investment, they're going to like that the property's got two leases on it. If somebody's going to buy this as an owner occupied, the good news is that first floor is month to month and we'll be able to negotiate that situation on your behalf to get the deal closed at your price. This isn't a problem that you've gone and, and committed to somebody on the second floor. And if you still want to lock in the price that you already previously had under contract, let's take 15 minutes, either Thursday or Friday after one, whichever works better for you and meet up and, and talk about it. I'm, my goal is to, is to come over and show you how we can get you net the money that you want in your bank account for your property and earn the opportunity to work for you and get the job done that you 
that you tried to start months ago and it didn't get done. That's all I'm asking for is 15 minutes to come over and show you exactly how we can earn this job working for you and you netting the amount of money that you want for this deal so that you don't have to be a landlord moving forward. Does that sound fair? What's better for you, Thursday or Friday? What time is going to be best for you? We're going to meet at the property, right? What time on Friday is best for you? One o'clock on Friday. And just can you just confirm that this is the this is the best number for you? Can you uh, recite it back to me for me, please? Uh, here, I'll I'll just I'll I'll read it to you. It's two. It's the two zero three five zero six number, right? Okay, oh, perfect. Judy. So I, I just want to make sure I got the right number here. Um, and I'll see you at, at the property on Friday at one o'clock. Shelly, what's your what's your email so I can send you some information the right about me for the job of selling your home? So I got hung up on, and I'm calling back. guys somebody awesome here. shelly i one i appreciate you picking up today two i appreciate you giving me the opportunity to get this job done for you and i look forward to seeing you what me and a team member on friday at one o'clock uh, judith hi it's uh tom Tool all right shelly have a good night I stay well on the last call just wanted to budget back thank you i'm at uh four eight four All right, we'll debrief that deal. I got to take some notes here. Yeah, I think we got to talk about it too because I'm getting chirped here in the comments about my strategy, but I can explain why my strategy hey, works. By, by the way, we're going to debrief that call that, that I just had. That's a listing appointment Friday at 1 o'clock. Uh, somebody who, did, who wants was going back to, be, to renting out the deal, mm. okay? And then now if, if she can get the money that she wants, we're going to meet about it. We're going to talk about it. That's, that's, a, that's a great thing. Oh, yeah. Before I debrief this call, hit subscribe if you're getting value from this. Share this up. Hit the thumbs up. The thumbs up really helps this video get in front of more people um, who want to hear, how, want to gain some confidence on getting these calls done. So hit the thumbs up. Hit the subscribe. We, we got to have a, a, a thumbs up and a subscribe after every, uh, after every book. Listen, like I said before, I'm working off a of Tom Ferry script. I didn't use, I didn't read down the entire thing, uh, but I did pick <clears throat> my spots on this script. I know the script inside and out. I've used this language over and over and over again. This is somebody who, who had a property under contract and the deal fell through. Okay. They're frustrated with the experience. Okay. So they're looking for a way out of their frustration. She's thinking about going back the other way, which is there's more frustration being the landlord and renting this thing back out using the language. Like I want to earn the opportunity to work for you and sell this deal for you. And if I can get you the money that you want to sell the property, would you move forward and do that? Is that fair? You see me shaking my head when I ask her, is that fair? Yes, that's fair. That's closing the gap on the phone to get this appointment. But what's the number one goal on these calls? We're looking to get in front of this person so that we can build a relationship with her. Shelly's frustrated, okay? She wants to sell the property. She had it under contract. She is fed up with the last experience. She was thinking about becoming a landlord. And our goal here on the phone call is to get an appointment in front of her so that we can create and build on that relationship and see if we can help her accomplish her goal. That's the only goal that we have on these calls. Mm -hmm. Dan, anything there that uh, you think we should debrief with the conversation? I know you guys couldn't really hear her on the other end because we're obviously not recording. You know, we're not breaking any laws there. But yeah. Dan, any, anything? Um, no, anything I mean, I, I think, I think you, you did a great job. I think you followed the script, but you kind of implemented it to a way that you know, works for you. You're not just reading it line by line. And the most important thing is you got that appointment. You handled every objection she had or every negative you turned into a potential positive and you wound up with the appointment. I think that's really the name of the I, game. 
how many times did I ask for the appointment Thursday or Friday? What works better for you? Respecting mm -hmm. my calendar, it's got to be after one. We do a lot of training and stuff before one, right? How many times did I ask? More than three. Yeah. And, and I think, too, what people don't realize is kind of giving, like, instead of saying, hey, when are you free? You know, when, when works for you? It's like, hey, are you free Friday at one? Or are you free Friday at two? You know, whatever. Or Saturday at one or Saturday at four? Say, you know, you take command and, and give them the times as opposed to saying, well, when are you free? Uh, well, let, let me call you back tomorrow. Let me take a look at my schedule. Like, no, you want to get that appointment set and done right then and there. She asked me, she's like, you know, at one point in the call, she's like, why should I even give you the opportunity? So you got to know your credentials, why you can sell yourself, uh, why you're, why you should be coming in there. Right. I told her the, the value we had, but then I turned it right back on the property, the pain point of that deal falling apart. And if we can pull this thing together, if we can get you a qualified buyer, is it worth your time? Is it worth your time? Now she's continuing to, uh, get closer and closer to the appointment. And Byron, you also use social proof, right? About how you have the number one team and how many sales you guys have. And I saw a bunch of comments where people were saying that, well, what if I don't have that? Or what if I'm not on a team? Great. Or if I don't if, have all the If you don't have that and, and they ask you for it, I would, I would say to them this, okay? So they say to you, hey, what's your track record? They, they put you on the spot on the phone. My, and you, everybody has something, okay? So, so you, you don't, even if you're brand new and you don't have a team's numbers to leverage, you have something, okay? And so yeah. whether that's the brokerage, um, no matter what it is, okay? Now, if you're, I mean, if you're literally at a brokerage of one person, you have like no support, no mentorship, it might be, might be time to join like a team or something in your market, whatever, right? But I'm saying you, you still have something and you want to leverage that. Here's what I have uh, in terms of my education, Here's what I have with the people around me supporting me. And you know what else I have, Mr. Seller? I have a fierce commitment to getting your home sold. I have every single minute of every single day from the time you meet me and the time you hire me to get the job done until the moment this property sells. You flip it around. If you don't have the experience, I've got time as my advantage. Hey, I understand, Mr. Seller. A lot of agents are calling you. They're calling you left and right to get this deal. You told me you had a lot of calls. I don't have a listing, but what I do have is every single second to promote your property. If you hire me to get the job done, you can interview other agents, but please give me a shot. And if I can show you how much time I'm going to pour into this, how many uh, promotions I'm going to do to get your property sold, would that be worth your time having me come over for 15 minutes and discussing getting you the money that you want on your house. You just be straight up with them and you do it with enthusiasm because right. you can help that person. And Byron, I'm getting a, like some people are uh, like, you know, in the comments that I'm potentially being dishonest, but I'm, I'm not at all. I mean, everybody in here should want to buy real estate. I'm disclosing that I'm an agent. Um, all of these are true that I, that I am potentially looking for myself. If I found something tomorrow, I would buy it. I hate my apartment right now. But more than anything, I'm not going there saying that I have a buyer or I have somebody interested. I'm not wasting their time if they already are showing it. And on all three of those calls, I was able to find something in common, whether they knew my uncle, whether they knew me or, or the team, or whether they were already an agent anyway. So what's a 20-minute appointment of me walking around? Maybe I can find them a buyer if, it, if it's not going to be me. But more than anything, every other person that's calling them is pretending they have a buyer. Oh, oh can I do a video it. tour for you? Is other... We might have one here. This Tyler. Okay. Is there a better That's number to read? How I built my first house on that road. Wrong number. Keep talking, guys. Yeah, and and like to my point, I literally my first ever the home that my dream home that I bought and sold last year. I this was how I did it. I went on the appointment. I somehow got the listing, and I was like, you know what? I actually don't even want to put this on the market. I I I want to buy it myself, and I I bought it off market. And I got a great deal on it. So the, the main idea is like, I'm actually genuinely interested in the home. And if I'm not, then I'll say, Hey, listen, I'm so sorry. It's not for me. Like, I'm not here to take your listing. I don't even preach about the listing or nothing. And what usually winds up happening is after three months or two months of being on the market as for sale by owner, they get sick of the same people calling them and over and over again and lying. And they'll remember me as like, wow, 
what was that one guy's name that didn't you know say anything about the listing that just genuinely came here built rapport nice guy dan o'neill let's give him a call and that's how i get all the listings if i don't buy it myself or i'll find it for somebody else i have my team and i we have 50 buyers right now that are looking. Listen, you, when you, you walk into a house, you should be thinking about, am I going to buy this and can I sell it? Those are the first two questions because yep. there's going to be opportunities we get that other people don't. Obviously, there's disclosures there you want to put into place. Mm. I, I'm a big fan of this. And I, and I, and I never – I've used the script in, in the past. I use it when I have a buy box, when I'm looking for an investment and it fits the buy box or I'm looking for a house for myself. Okay, so you definitely use that. Just like you use, I have a buyer in your neighborhood scripting on a circle dial or a call when you have a buyer. Okay. Mm -hmm. I know that Dan's looking for property in Florida. If you follow him on Instagram at Dan O'Neill underscore, you'll know that he is because you'll see on his stories when he's down there looking, looking. for deals yeah. and he's looking for deals in, in his market too. He just sold a big house last year. Yep. Here, listen, everybody on this live call should be trying to buy and sell actively in the market at all times. It's going to bring you uh, to a deeper knowledge base in your market mm -hmm. with the people that you're serving. So you should be looking for deals and, for yourself. The other thing too is all so far I'm three for three, all three of those properties, I already have somebody in mind that I know right now is either, you know, waiting or they're on the fence that I could potentially say, Hey, by the way, I just toured one, two, three main street. It's not on MLS. So you probably didn't see it. This actually might fit your criteria. So even if it's not me, it could be one of my agents. It could be one of the, you know, a buyer that we're dealing with. So we've got to, okay. We've got to create more relationships in mm -hmm. 2023. We've got to have more conversations. We got to get in front of more people. And when we get in front of more people, we may like Dan is talking about match people up. We may get introduced to somebody else. There's so many different building blocks that come with taking these appointments and just going out there and being a conversation machine in the morning and the evenings and an appointment machine in between. And, and guess what? You're getting out there and you're, you're learning the inventory, right? You're, you're seeing what's on the market. You're, you're previewing everything that's out there. So in my opinion, it's the same thing as saying you have a buyer. It's the same thing as all of those things. And all I know is I'm three for three. And if we do this in, again in a week, I guarantee you I got at least two listings. Leave it at that. All right, let's get somebody else on the phone here. Yeah, uh, what are you doing in Florida? All right, so you go ahead, dial. Tom, are you dialing? I've made 59 dials. I am striking out like the Philadelphia Phillies in the World Series. Keep I'm dialing keep because, because you know, we've had a couple of good calls. Uh, this is – and listen, if we weren't stopping and debriefing, there, there probably would be an ability – or there definitely is an ability as you do this on your own for you to get more calls in, right? You, you can get a number – if you're doing the triple line dialer, which none of us are doing just – because of you know, because we're sharing this with with all of you, you can get more calls in. Um, so this is this is calls. You take an hour, take two hours, take three hours each and every single day, and you stay consistent with it. I mean, to recap, I have a coffee meeting on a one plus million dollar expired listing that we're gonna have this weekend. I have a follow up call scheduled for tomorrow at the same time. And then I have a listing appointment for one o'clock Friday. And we've been doing this for an hour and 20 minutes and we've stopped for each other's calls. Mm -hmm. So just think about how much we can all get done, how much activity we can all get done. The more and more calls we make. Byron, you know, it'd be a, a cool idea. And I mean, you got to think I, I have three appointments now. Granted, they're not like sit down listing appointments, but I have three appointments. You know, what might be cool is if um, you guys hosted almost like a, uh, maybe bi-weekly war room where everybody just hops Hi, on a Dan. Zoom, mutes yourself, and we all make calls together. Uh, Dan. Hi, my name's uh, Tom. I'm a local realtor in King of Prussia. I saw your home came off the market over on Crockett and I wanted like to see when you plan on interviewing the right agent for the job of getting it sold. I feel like that's actually a really good idea. And I have the flu, by okay. the way. Got it. So you, so you took it down for the holidays, and that makes a lot of sense. I mean, there, there's, there's obviously a dip in traffic during that time, so that's great to hear. Uh, so where are you planning on uh, moving to once the once the property sells? Okay, so so you're not sure, and it's always good to keep your keep your options open there. So um, I, I see that the home's been on the market a, a, a decent amount of time. So what do you think stopped it from selling so far? Mm. Th this is a seated out. The the actual value. Okay, got it, got it. So recognizing the commercial value. Okay. 
Sure, sure. I, 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 get, I get that. So, um, so you're, you're really looking for someone to see that there's commercial value to the property, especially where, where it's located. So tell me more about that. I mean, I'm looking at the, at the listing here and it doesn't tell me a whole lot about what could be done with it commercially. So I, I, don't, I want to make sure I'm not missing something. Okay, so you can do anything with it. Because okay, got it. So, do you, have you talked to the township at all? Are there any any uses that you, that you're aware of? I'm, I'm just. It doesn't look like that's really made clear here to the buyers, which might be part of the problem. Sure, sure, and and, and a home office is definitely a, a valid use. No, I'm, I'm looking at the commercial listing, um, and and. Uh, all it says here is a combination of living space and business. And it, it's not really too detailed. And obviously, you know, commercial real estate is pretty intricate in terms of if it's an industrial use, what kind of business can be run out of the property. And, you know, I don't, I don't trust buyers to do any research on their own. I think you want to make this as clear as possible to folks so they know what the possibilities are. So could, could you tell me a little bit more about that? And, and that way I can see if this will be a fit for anyone we're working with, or it, at least just understand what the value is to the property in the first place. That was a great line. I don't know if you guys picked up on that. Okay, that's so retail and traffic. Got it. Okay. So you can run retail, have parking, you've run um, your website out of there and the reason I'm asking is I don't see any of this on, on, on the current listing. So anyone who's looking for that kind of property is probably not going to even know about it. So uh, how did you end up uh, selecting the, the last agent that you had the home on the market with? It's your son. Okay. Got it. Got it. And uh, so, I mean, it, it's been on the market, obviously it looks like 1200 some days. Okay. So if I was able to show you how we could market the home to the right buyer and identify them, would you be open to a quick meeting? Sure. And, you know, anytime someone says, make me an offer or bring your buyer over, that really demonstrates you're serious about selling. So if I could show you some of the advanced strategies that we've used to succeed where other agents can't. So you want someone to offer you... Tom's listening. It's a big part of the part of the appointment here. Sure. Well, you know, that, that that's really the whole reason you hire an agent in the first place. Reinforcing the value of getting together for when he closes. All right, you guys want to debrief this call? He hung up I on you. I did not there? get the appointment and I got hung up on just to be okay. very clear. So Damn. um the agent is his son and this home has been on the market 1250 days mm. so you know i mean I, I would i would question the motivation there um I, for I, sure and and you know when he told me it's a it's a residential and commercial property and i said how can you use it commercially the zoning says residential in the mls so i'm going to follow up with this guy i mean obviously it's son that his son that's a little tough but certainly his son's not doing the right job. And this is why you don't want to hire friends and family. And I'm obviously not the first person to call him. Now, he did pick up. So, you know, when someone says, bring me an offer, right? I don't know if you guys heard that. Or, or make me an offer or bring a buyer. To me, you want to really tell him, hey, by you saying that, that demonstrates you're serious about selling. How do we get all the buyers involved there? Or how do we get all the buyers in the marketplace through? Um, obviously, he's frustrated. I'd be frustrated, too. You know, it, it was a, it, there was a little bit of a question there. He had this listed at one point two million. It's down to seven hundred and fifty nine thousand. So that's a margin of error of almost fifty percent, fellas. So um, someone's asking if I would offer to partner up with the son. I mean, I'd pay the son a referral fee if I was to handle the listing. But I, you know, I don't want this 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 guy any. I mean, Tom, why don't you call him back? Be like, hey, I'm sorry, I thought we got disconnected. He said I'm hanging up the phone now. Please bring uh, me a buyer. So I'm going to kind of. <laughs> 
<laughs> and and so I but and and like there was there was literally I mean if you were to look at the MLS listing, it says are you looking for the right combination of living space and business workspace all under one roof? There's no mention of uses. And I mean I I I know how to read the public records. So you know th this guy may be a tough sell. I still will call him back. There's no question there. Um, I don't know you're going to get anywhere with this one. And I, I, to be brutally honest, if it, I call this guy three, four, five more times and it doesn't go anywhere, I'm probably going to give up because it is his son. Um, yeah. And I'd look for someone that's a little more motivated. And I think you got to identify if they're motivated or not. 1,250 days. Dan, you just sold your home. Byron, you just moved. Could you imagine having real estate dominate your life for almost four years? It's a serious pain point. And there's absolutely a lack of motivation there. And somebody who's likely taking advantage of his son's license. I think I may try to recruit the son. I mean, listen, coach him up. anybody that had a listing that didn't get sold in 2020, 2021, 20, I mean, his father is making the son look foolish in a market like we just experienced the last three years. So I actually feel bad for the for the son in that situation. But I think it's good to hear the exercise because these are common objections. Bring me a buyer. How many times has an expired said that? And if absolutely, you can and so that demonstrates you're serious. Why don't we talk about how we find all the buyers? That, that's a great so, way to handle that. It, it didn't generate an appointment. It wasn't a real seller, by the way, that, that, that guy. Me, me, that meaning, is true. You know, so, but having these conversations, putting your script, which Tom's working off the Mike Ferry. I'm working off the Tom Ferry. Putting your scripting into a game, okay? This is, that was, because that guy's not a real seller, it's like a scrimmage, all right? Getting out there and putting the, putting the, the pads on and going into a scrimmage helps you when the next call it's always about the next call when it's game time when the lights are on friday night lights baby <laughs> all right i'm gonna i'm gonna go ahead and get uh my dialer loaded back up yeah i'm gonna do one right now too <clears throat> i'd love to hear tom on a on a real seller I, I had a couple real sellers in there and i'm just thankful i was able to get them on the phone so that we could share that but but Tom's better than I am, man. Tom is, he is good. You know, I this. think that the thing about this though, is that you're going to have days like I'm having right now yep. where you're not getting anybody on the five. I've made 62 dials, which would have been faster. And I'm on a single line dialer. Um, and I've got, I've talked to maybe three people. Uh, so y you have to kind of know these things are going to come in bunches like both Dan and Byron have seen here. So I think that, that that's part of understanding this and the software is not messing me up. There's no one to blame here but myself, whatever comment that is. So mm -hmm. it's, you got to keep going. This is a marathon, not a sprint. Yes, it is. <clears throat> <coughs> All right, let's see. Ooh, I really want to do one, Florida one here. Let's see what happens. I'd like a pick up here. <laughs> Should I call a seventeen million dollar one? <laughs> Hey, I'm you don't have those properties in Philadelphia. <clears throat> I'm looking in Florida. Hey, yeah, I'm looking to potentially buy your 17. Imagine, imagine that pre-approval. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. Well, I think at that point you'd be sending a proof of funds. <laughs> this is a Jordan flu game here. I was the sickest I've ever been in my entire life yesterday. Tom reminds me of Marty Bird. <laughs> know, is, that, is that a compliment? I don't know. I mean. That was the funniest. So, that was awesome. <laughs> the nice thing about using a dialer for anyone who hasn't used a dialer is it, it is just ringing automatically for me and Tom. So, like, I, we're both doing the same thing here. The dialer is doing what it's supposed to do, which is making the calls for us. So we're not sitting here dialing each one of them in. I've timed this. It takes one minute and 45 seconds to manually dial a phone number and leave a voicemail. So you're capping... 30 calls i've made 62 calls and, dropped 19 voicemails in one hour and 11 minutes and tom referenced that hey there's double line triple line dialers where you can be calling three people at once to even increase your odds and and be more efficient with the time that you have available to make these calls i would suggest starting on one you know nobody got on a bike without training wheels so if you're not familiar with a dialer like we're doing tonight we're doing one dials um you know, one single line dialer, I would, I would start there. Well, it, it, I remember when my original coach, Carl Rizzuto from Tom Ferry, he said, you're not using a dialer. And he hung up the phone on me and said, get it by the next call. And that was it. 
I mean, that, that's how important this was, and it dramatically changed I'm my Donald business. Byron Lucene with the one team at William Ravis Real Estate. I have a question about your property in Durham. Please give me a call back, 860-941-2755. Thanks and be well. I, I see a, a, question, a recent question. Um, uh, Finn, we're getting these numbers from the dialer. So Mojo, or I'm using Mojo. I think Tom is using Vulcan. Dan was using Vulcan 7. Um, but I saw a question somewhere in there, which was, at what rate do you get callbacks from voicemails? It depends what kind of voicemail you're leaving. I'm leaving a voicemail that says I have a question about the property. Somebody who's serious about selling their property is going to be curious what the question is. My question happens to be, are you still having thoughts of selling the property? So I'll, I'll get a good amount of callbacks on these tomorrow. Uh, okay. Hi, Tom. It's Byron Lazine with the one team at William Ravis Real Estate. I have a uh, question about your property. Uh, when you get a chance, give me a call back, 860-941-2755. Thanks, and be well. So I got a question about what the voicemail sounds like. So mine is pre-recorded. Um, hey, this is Tom Tool here with Remax, I'm calling you because I saw your home came off the market. And if you're thinking about selling, I am the expert in the Hello. area. Getting Hello. homes sold, other agents can't. I Hi, how you? Amount. All right, we'll continue later. Hi, uh, <laughs> I am. But before you hang up, I am from New York. I'm not looking to get your listing. Um, <laughs> I, I saw that it was for sale on uh, on Zillow or even for lease. Um, we recently opened up an office over in Hi, Saturday, Jeffrey uh, Byron Lucene and with the one team at William Ray myself uh, for something to potentially buy and or lease. Is there any way that I could get some information from you and potentially set up an appointment or have somebody from my team maybe go and do a video tour? Okay. Is is the lease? Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. So it's already, it's basically already sold in theory. Okay. And then, and as far as the leasing, that's, that's kind of out the window already or. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I'd be able to get there in time. So I appreciate it. And God bless. And thank you for your time and good luck with the sale. All right. Bye. Uh, Alex asked us, is there one specific starter that's your most often go to on on cold calls. I'm not sure. I mean, these are expired. So I'm always saying, Hey, your property was on the market and it no longer is. Are you still having thoughts of selling? That's my opening. And I, are you still having thoughts of selling the property? I want to articulate selling the property uh, very clearly, but sometimes you call people on expireds and they don't know that their house is no longer on the very market. true. Great point. They actually don't know this. So they're like, what? My house isn't on the market. Yeah, it is. No, no, it's not. And and you explain to them that not even being on the MLS is a is a pretty surefire bet for not exposing your property to the right qualified buyers. And you know you'll never get it sold there. And they they're like, because listen, <laughs> expired deals. The number one complaint, seven out of ten sellers. Number one complaint is no communication from my agent. So, yeah, Byron. You know what? What's interesting too? Somebody told me this when I first What's got my license. Here? So somebody told me this when I first got my license is pretty interesting. And I, and I always think of it is when somebody lists their home, as soon as that for sale sign goes in their front yard, they're already mentally checked out of that home, right? Like they're already, they already have that house sold in, in their opinion. So even as an expired, these people want to sell, right? They, they put the house on the market. They want to get rid of the house. They want to leave. It's just a lot of times it's the agent, maybe the agent overpromised, overpriced. So. Yeah. And listen, we're going to get into a market. Tom, are you dialing so we can, we I'm can dialing. Get another? okay, good. I just paused mine when Dan was on his. Sorry. So we're going to get into a market right now where not everything is going to sell in 2023. Instantly. If you're in the median price point in your town, you're probably going to sell it, you know, within a week or two. But if you're, if you're trying to jack up 
the income that you can make in 2023. Hence, you're going up in price point in your market. Then you're undoubtedly going to get into a situation where some homes are on the market a little bit longer. And what Dan is talking about is the mistake that agents make that don't have a lot of listings or haven't had an experience with a lot of listings. They get nervous about what to say to the seller and stop calling them back. They or they not that they're not calling them back. They're just not calling. They're just like hoping that the seller doesn't call them and they don't call the seller, right? And so three months can go by on a six month listing where these sellers don't call or these agents rather, excuse me, don't call their seller. They have basically ghosted them while they're under contract. A lot of those end up in this expired list where there was a lack of communication. So number one, if you've got the opportunity to serve somebody and work for them and get their house sold, even if every single week you call them once a week to say, I haven't gotten you the buyer that meets your price and meets your requirements to this point, but I wanted to call you and tell you where we're at, tell you what I've been doing to work every angle in this market that I can work for you. What the, here's what we've done. Once again, did you get the report on the, the activity online? Did you get the, uh, the report I sent you from showing time? Did you get these reports and what do you, Mr. Seller think we should try? Because I've tried Absolutely everything. And, and right. And you want to have these conversations and keep reminding them that I am working for you. You're the boss and you want to lead them into if the house is sitting, we all know, right. There's a price conversation. You want to lead them into saying, should we consider Dan talking about the price? Do you think now's the time, Dan, to go ahead and reduce this price? If they say it, it's going to be an easy switch to get the right price on that house. All right, if you're enjoying this, we, we got a little bit of time left and, and I'd love to answer as many questions while Tom uh, is continuing to dial. Uh, I can jump into some more dials so here. Dan's dialing too. I'm getting people to pick up. <clears throat> that woman uh, that I just called, she already sold it. Good for her. Uh, lo love to answer some more of these questions. Um, and, and so we'll, we'll get into those. If you're enjoying this, hit the subscribe. Uh, you know, we're going to do a bunch more of these cold calls. We're going to do a FISBO call where we just exclusively go after uh, for sale by owners. We'll do a circle prospecting call, how to get people excited about an open house that you're hosting. <laughs> if you're into that, let us know in the comments, hit subscribe. If you want to make sure you don't miss these opportunities, uh, we want to elevate what's happening on the phone calls in this industry. We've got a lot of value to give back to people who are frustrated about selling their home, or interested in buying, selling, investing in real estate. We've got the power. This is a golden opportunity that everybody in this industry has to help a whole bunch of people, to show them how passionate you are. And we want to just help everybody uh, make more of these phone calls to elevate the business. So we're going to do the open. Diane, love it. We'll do an open house um, call on circle prospecting. That's a, and listen, that's going to be an easier call than than the expireds to make. You can create Agreed. a lot of great conversations, circle dialing for open houses. Uh, love doing that. We'll definitely do that. Hit subscribe and, and please consider taking this video and sharing it with someone who's getting into expireds, who wants to make more expired calls, who wants more listings in 2023. Consider taking this link. Shooting, a, shooting them a text. This is going to stay up after the live call. So if you missed anything, if you're just coming in, but let's recap here real quick. I've got a listing appointment Friday at one on a two family. I've got a coffee appointment set up for this weekend in Naples, Florida for a Connecticut house, over a million dollar house. We had a commonality that we both own property in Naples. That secured that deal for me. And then I've got a uh, follow-up call for tomorrow uh, agreed upon. That is in an hour and a half where we've got three people stopping. So, so that's what I've got. Dan, recap what you've got here so far. Oh, and yeah, I've got, I I've got, uh, <clears throat> I got three emails too, by the way. Yeah. So I, I've got a, uh, an appointment tomorrow at two o'clock. I have <clears throat> appointments at 10 and 11 on Saturday um, I think I, I went three for four. I only had four people pick up, but 
Uh, out of that, one person knew my uncle, so that was easy enough. The second person uh, knows me just from from the area, and uh, and the first person uh, is in an area where I grew up in, and they uh, they're in the business and they're looking to get out of the business. So maybe they could sell me their house and uh, sell me their book of business all in one. Tom Tool, who is the the goat of these calls, the objection handler goat. He, you can see the belt in the back. Tom, recap uh, what, what you've had here so far. Who's, who's winning right now, by the way? We got 15 minutes left. We, this should so be a great It's not call. me. I mean, I mean, I got a goose egg going, and I think this is a great example of it's a numbers game, right? I mean, you got to do this every day because I can't control who's going to pick up the phone. I mean, I've made 76 dials here and have had a handful of conversations. Um, what I did get is someone I think might be motivated and need to follow up. And I'm going to keep going. And I think it's also when, like, you ever heard, like, the 554, Byron? Like, we've heard this a million times. Like, these are new people. But you also got to make time to call the people that you're nurturing because these yeah. calls are going to take a little bit as well. And working your sphere, which might be another great thing to do is calling your sphere and seeing how that goes on uh, live on here. I think that could be pretty interesting because I think a lot of people get freaked out about that, especially newer agents. They feel like they're getting they're calling them just to say, like, hey, Byron, you're ready to sell your house instead of actually having a conversation with those folks. So that could be another thing we, we do here if you guys are down for that. I think we got to do the uh, the war room. I think that's a great idea. <clears throat> have everybody just hop in on a Zoom and put it on mute and make calls. <clears throat> Losing my voice here. I have the flu. Not a big deal. Sound like a DMX or something, Dan. I mean, arf, arf. it's a it's a Long Island issue. That's that's for sure. I saw somebody saying they couldn't hear us anymore. I'm assuming that that was just that one situation. It sounds like I don't see that anymore in the chat. So, um, yeah, we can do Paul. We can definitely do a webinar uh, where we where we get more people on the Zoom. Very surprising. Sorry to cut you off, Byron. I I thought I had, you know, for the amount of calls that I made in this session, uh, I was pretty pleased with the answers I got. I love the conversation on the on the deal that was over a million. I love having a, li a, a real listing appointment for Friday at 1 p.m. Uh, Contractor Mike has declared me the winner. Hey, Contractor Mike, what? that's good enough for me. What? Uh, that is good enough for me, Dan. That's okay. One one out of the one hundred people. That is insane. Dan has his you got, dance. You got a, a potential coffee date. I got three. No, I have a I have a listing appointment at one p.m. on Friday for okay. someone who had their house on the market couldn't sell it, and uh, and I'll definitely be. You know, I feel like we should try to get one more here before we try to wrap it up. Make sure yeah. everyone likes and subscribes. Let's try to get one more on the hook here between the three of us. At least yeah, one give more. us the likes, give the subscribes here. We've been working hard, and you know I'm standing up. I think there's a little science to this as well. I Having agree. You should. Earbuds in. You taking should. I'm notes. not. I'm. I'm melting. It is so hot in my place. I have the flu. Drinking Pedialyte. Dreams do come true, and this better than new five bedroom colonial. This middle yeah, house. Boy. Tom, Dreams. you got your dialer going. I'm. I'm rolling. Nobody in Florida picks up their phone, huh? What the hell's going on here? <clears throat> I'm I'm off the dialer now. I'm just gonna make a I'm I'm cherry picking as they say. Yeah, I'm doing the same thing. There's just no just for the purpose of if I'm if I was not on this live stream, I wouldn't be cherry picking like this. I would let the dialer do its work because I want to increase my opportunities. Oh. Nobody in Florida answers the phone. Hi, this is Byron Lazine with the one team at William Rivers Real Estate. And I have a question about your property. You can give me a call back at 860-941-2755. And have a great day. Thank you. So I'm of the mindset again, if you're just jumping in, a professional should always leave a voicemail, but give them a reason to call back. Okay. I've got a question. Uh, which firm do you work with? Okay. I guess Dan can't get in trouble when he's only calling agents. I'd love to hear that. That's awesome. So um, my name is Dan O'Neill. I'm looking at it on Zillow. I'm actually coming from New York. Um, we just opened up an office over in Sarasota. So I'm bouncing between Sarasota, St. Pete, Tampa, 
haven't really made up my mind yet, but I did see this come across. You know, obviously, you know, there's no inventory, but I saw that a price cut of 64.3 million. Is that a, is that a mistake? It has to be, right? <laughs> D D Dan's laugh just keeps people on the phone. I'm like, this has got to be the deal of the century. I'm like, I'm like, this house made of 18 karat gold. What the heck? <laughs> oh my god! <clears throat> I've done that before. That's funny. <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. Well that that makes sense. Is your is your daughter still living there or or is it vacant? Okay. Okay. H how would it uh I do and uh and and really myself uh included W would there be a time that I could have somebody go over and either do like a video tour or Hi, take a look at the house? Hi, Chris. with the or one team the unit? at William Ravis. I have a question about your property in Wallingford. Yes. Give me a call back at 860-941-2755. Thanks. Appreciate your time and be well. Tom, you're striking out on uh, answers over there, huh? Yes. Now, Tom, you have your automatic voicemail set up. Is that what you've got? Yeah. Yeah, I'm dropping a voicemail every time. It just, it's going to save a lot of time for me. That's, that's just how I've done this. So just got to keep going. I mean, that's the name of the game. Dan, Dan's muted. So, Tom... He so a lot of people are asking what voicemail am I dropping? I, I, I've, and uh, I'll, I'll just go over it okay. again, where basically I introduce myself. I've sold hundreds of homes other people can't. And if you're serious about selling, give me a call. And then I also follow up with more phone calls yes. and with mailers. So there's a whole <laughs> system here with this. But you can't just do one. The, the, the mail will help you with okay. the voicemails. And then if you do get someone okay. on the phone – fifth, sixth, seventh call, the serious people tend to rise to the top and they want someone that aggressive. Listen, here. I, Remember, they we sell, sell with someone else before. Year, we, like, we so past, you know, <laughs> we're over-communicating with so. their other agent probably didn't. What, what I can do too is, um, so if it's okay with you, maybe if Saturday, um, if you're free, if you're, if you're around, um, I would love to be able to send John. And what I can do too is, um, because I've made that issue with Zillow one zillion times, I actually have their agent support number that you can call and you could say, Hey, I made the mistake and they can wipe that off for you. So that way it doesn't say the $65 million price cut. That's, that's my Christmas Hanukkah Kwanzaa gift for you. <laughs> Maybe give me a discount on the house. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Okay, so what, what would what would be the most efficient efficient way? Maybe just text you over my information and then um, you know see what time your daughter's available over the weekend. Figure Saturday, some point, sometime. Okay, and and is this your cell phone? Okay. Okay. Okay, perfect. People are asking about the best yes. hours to make calls. Well, it may not appear. Four to six is the best time. And I'm going to text you over Four to six and eight to 11. Seriously. That's when you want to be making calls. This is documented by the Harvard Business All right. Review. And then uh, hopefully when I'm down there, we can do some business together. All right. What was your name? Pam. It was very nice speaking to you, Pam. All right. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you again. All right. Bye-bye. Damn, what was that? Another agent? I mean, who, who'd you call there? <clears throat> she was licensed, but it was her daughter's property. Literally says sixty-five million. I'm looking for. I'm looking for Juan. Who? Is this uh, Juan Wilbur? Oh, great! Yeah, I'd love the right number. 
Oh, hi, is this Nelly? No, oh, I'm sorry. Thought I had one, Dan. I look like Dan Castellanos. That was Game the that six. was the that was the first number I called. You know how Mojo sometimes has like three numbers? It's like a family member's number or something. And sometimes it does some weird stuff in there. So I called the first number, no answer. I already had left a message and then um called that second number nice. trying to get the spread. I like this property. Oh. Oh. I never thought I would see the day that I won today. Um well <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Dan is are, self- we, are we going by appointments? What, what are we going by? Dan is the self-proclaimed. I want number of dials. Yeah. I, and listen. Dials. Okay. You, you can call 700. I'll, I'll call 10 and I'll go on four listing appointments. I, I like the appointments from Dan. Definitely. Of course it's appointments. Of course it's appointments. Number yeah, one indicator. Like that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And recruiting appointments, Dan, if that's what you said, are even better. I, I'm, I'm, I'm getting everything. Are you kidding me? I even sent her the Zillow support number so that we right. could call them to fix the listing. I, I agree with Chris. You know, there was appointments set. Um, Tom, listen, it's actually maybe to the benefit of everybody that we had one strikeout, which, you know, unfortunately was Tom. Tom Tom's, uh, we shot. do another one of these calls. Tom's going to convert at a high level. If you missed the feel for sale by owner call on the walkthrough, okay. go search. Go search the walkthrough from a couple weeks ago where Tom did the for sale by owner. owner. Just search walkthrough for sale by owner here on the YouTube. And Tom locked it down. I mean, that, that was a, a brilliant call. Sometimes you're going to strike out. It's about getting back into it the next day and continuing to be consistent because these opportunities will come up. Uh, Eric, what's your takeaway here as we wrap up? We had almost 1,300 people live, almost 1,000 throughout the entire first hour. Feedback has been incredible. And Byron, despite popular belief, I have been working in the background, going live on Instagram, posting on BAM, resharing people's stories. This, this event, honestly, has been electric. I got so many texts from people saying how helpful this was. So I just want to say, great job to all of you. It's been fantastic. And if you're still watching, throw this video a like right now. Let's get this to over 500. And make sure you're sub to the channel because we're going to be doing events like this nonstop. Seriously, this was, this was epic. You, you, want to make, you, you want to make Eric's life get this video to over 500 likes. That, that'll make his it life... Will. His if you want to make me happy just for one day, please. I just want one day of happiness. Get this video to over 500 likes and get it to 10,000 after the fact. But as, a, as far as a content perspective goes, entertaining throughout the entire time, great commentary. And I think Danny Deals pulls home the belt here, even though he did talk to a bunch of agents. I've I've never seen anybody talk to more calls if you knew these people or what. But 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 that's what people people say that they're agents, right? Oh, um, you know, I've been having a license 30 years. That's why my house is expired. What what else am I supposed to do? Yeah, no, I know. They sound like failed real estate agents. When you're you're calling people in Florida, yeah, they all do have their license. I mean, so that 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 is everybody in Florida has their license. There's no question about that. You kidding me? It's like you get your pulse and your driver's license, you get your real estate license too. Even Eric has his real estate license. Think about that. That's scary. So I just renewed it, actually, just so I can <laughs> still have it. Subscribe up to, to this uh, YouTube channel. We're going to do this again. We're going to go into four sell by owner calls. Uh, so we'll do another one for four sell by owners. We're going to do the circle dialing open houses. That's a great way. If you're like super, you know, some people have a real allergic reaction to calls. Uh, a, a great way to get started is to buy is by doing these circle dialing and getting people excited about the open house that you're hosting. It's a great way to start creating relationships in a farm or in a community uh, that you're serving. So we're going to do these. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel on this video so that you can get the notifications for these. And Eric, Dan, can you take off those glasses we, one second? All I do is see the reflection. Thank you. Sorry. Have we hit 500? Like, have we hit 500 likes? Can yeah. Eric sleep sleep nice tonight? Yeah. yeah. Get the get this to over 500. <laughs> and by the way, I'm going to be doing a live Instagram posting. If anybody's interested in that, I'll be posting, <laughs> you know, photos on Instagram showing how I'm not actually going to do that. I got. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, right. That is the, that is the first ever bam expired cold calls there are more to come we're going to jump back in this month with another round of live cold calls dan 
you can have the belt for now. Tom, you are still the goat. I've got a couple of uh, notes to clean up here and some appointments and let's get after it. Let's raise the bar in this industry and create more opportunities for ourselves, for our team and help serve more people in our communities. Appreciate everybody who jumped in all the comments. Appreciate you guys. And thank you. Thanks everyone.